Welcome back to the 13th Sports Jam. I'm Rich Nye, and as Indiana celebrates its bicentennial, sports writers and sportscasters across the state have selected the 25 greatest sports stories in the history of Indiana. Tonight, we'll talk about it with the guys who were heavily involved in this project. Brent Slinkard is the president of Indiana Sports History, and Tom Kubot is the president of the Indiana Sports Writers and Sportscasters Association. You know Bob Kravitz next to me from WTHR.com. Brent, let's start with how does a project like this get off the ground? Well, Rich, you know we absolutely love sports in this country. We love amateur sports. We love professional sports. We love men's and women's sports. We love the big game. We love the rivalry games, and sports play such a significant role in our culture. But in Indiana, it's even more special, largely because of the great athletes, the great coaches, uh, many of the story programs that we have here in the state of Indiana. And uh, it's a special time to celebrate the greatest sports stories in the history of Indiana. Tom, how in the world do you begin to define exactly what a story is and then rank them after that? Well, that was a discussion that we had more, more than once, uh, how to define it. Because, to be honest, we, we thought perhaps if we, if we went to specific games or, or that, there'd be a good chance that, for example, IU, all five of their national championship teams would be a story. And who knows how many stories would come from the Indy 500 and how many from Notre Dame. And there was a chance that probably those three elements would take up most of the 25. Mm -hmm. And we thought about, well, if that's what happens, so be it, if that's the way the vote goes. But we broadened the definition of, of a story a little bit, as you'll see as you get into the top 25. Well, let's look at the top five right now. No question that basketball has to be at the top of the list in the state. Ba basketball is one and two. Tiny Milan wins the 1954 state championship. IU basketball with five national championships finishes number two. The Indianapolis 500 is third on the list. Indiana High School basketball comes back again, number four, just as a whole in all of its relevance. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Indianapolis Colts, number five, when they arrive in 1984. Bob, any surprises in the top five? Absolutely none. I mean, to me, the Milan game, I mean, what, what we've seen on, on film, uh, has just taken it to another level. And, and, and really, high school basketball, while it may not be preeminent anymore, I think the Colts and IU basketball are probably one, two in this state. But you go back through the history of this great state, and, and high school basketball has to be it. And that was the seminal moment. And when a moment inspires a movie, <laughs> that we're celebrating 30 years of, Tom, I guess that tells you how big a moment it was. Well, I don't know if Milan, the actual game, needed any help, but Hoosiers, I think, elevated it even more. And I believe, anyway, that if, if the other 49 states did the same thing with their top 25, they might not have any high school uh, sports, sporting events in the top 25. Mm -hmm. And I would wager that not any 40, uh, uh, other 49 would have a high school sports story at number one. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think that would happen. Mm -hmm. And that just shows you how special Indiana high school basketball is. And Bob, you know nothing moves the needle when it comes to sports talk conversation like IU basketball. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> nothing. It's, uh, I'll tell you what, when I'm, when I'm trolling for clicks, which you know we do all the time, <laughs> I write IU basketball. It's, uh, you know, what they've, what they've meant to this state and, you know, with McCracken and Knight and and so on. Uh, it's, just, it's just astonishing the impact they've had. And an undefeated team in 1976 that hasn't been matched since, Brent. You know, how, how can you look at it any other way? That's really maybe the defining part of that story is that undefeated team uh, and really the 75 team, which many would debate is just as good. So I think that's the cornerstone of that story is that 75-76 stretch. Did you guys go out and have beers and argue about this stuff? Because that's what people are going to do. Absolutely. They're argue about it. We, we, we talked about how it would create. Um, you know, I'm very pleased with the top 25 from mm -hmm. 1 to 25. But we know that people are going to get together. Two things. One, I hope it causes people, or not causes, but helps people relive some of these great moments mm -hmm. in the top 25. Mm -hmm. But you know they're going to they're gonna discuss and there's going to be controversy and they're going to say, well, if I did it, I'd have such and such higher And it's or generational, lower. too, yes. that you're going to have the younger people are going to say, well, Peyton Manning, you know, but people uh, of a certain age, like you, well, <laughs> I might say Milan, you know, and, and Muncie Central. 
Uh, I'm not saying you're that old. No, but I am. <laughs> you kind of are. Yeah. But, you know, so I think it's going to be a great generational debate But as well. it's interesting that, that the number 25 is the Franklin Wonder Five. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't around for that, but <laughs> yeah. it, it, it made the list. I, I read your stuff from that. Well, well something that's very unique about Indiana, besides basketball, is racing. And the Indianapolis 500 is the biggest part of that, number three on the list, celebrating its 100th running this year. Mm -hmm. But I've got to believe that all the dirt track racing you see all over the state and all the great racers like a Jeff Gordon and a Tony Stewart that have come up through Indiana racing, that all goes back to what's happened at the Indianapolis 500 starting in 1911. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the foundation. You know, like minor league baseball helps, you know, the majors, what you just said, uh, really feeds, and, and the fans, I think, in this state particularly, if they go to those dirt track races and they see whoever it might be, then they get excited a few years later when that same person is racing at the 500, mm -hmm. maybe even winning it. Yeah. And it makes Indianapolis a very unique, and in Indiana, a very unique sports market to have that racing element. And not only the tracks, but so many teams and the business of racing is based right here in Indianapolis mm -hmm. as well. We go back to high school hoops again at number four, mm -hmm. and just the whole idea of our love for high school hoops from a game that Damon Bailey attracted 50,000 people that I actually got to call on radio play by play. <laughs> and I, it's unfathomable to think that many people would come to a high school basketball game, Bob. Well, we've got how many gyms uh, of the, was it eight of the 10? 12 of the top 15, 12 I the top 15, yes, right. something Including like that. In terms uh, of size. It's astonishing. Yeah. it's astonishing. It's astonishing. And it's, it's kind of sad. We can argue all day about the single class system, but you know, for, I got here in 2000, which was about when things were starting to change, and I would have loved to have been around during the single class uh, system days mm -hmm. when it was it. It was number one, and there was no question about it. Right. Yeah. And Bob Hamill, the sports writer from Bloomington, on a radio show we did earlier, and I think he was right on, though. He said the one thing that the organizers of the IHSA that made this change didn't quite understand that, yeah, the, the state championship game was big, but really back then the sectionals yes. were very, very big because they were neighborhood schools. They were already rivals. And then that was the chance for the, the Milans of the world to knock off the big school and the sectional. And uh, yeah. we, don't, we really don't have that. It's not the same anymore. And Indianapolis and Indiana was really all about high school sports, the amateur sports capital of the world until 1984, I believe. And when the Colts came in 84 with the Mayflower trucks, all of a sudden, Indianapolis became more of a pro big time city, Bob. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, the Colts to me are number one. And, and you know, all you have to do is sort of look at the, uh, the, the, the demographics and, and look, at the, look at the numbers for what people are watching, what people are reading. Um, there's no question they are number one. I think IU basketball is probably number two. And uh, I mean, high school, high school basketball is still obviously very, very important, but the Colts are preeminent right now. Well, we are short on time, but take a look at six through 10. Bob Knight, no question he's got to be on the list. And there's a million moments that you could point to, but this is a guy who became an icon, a legend in college basketball and did it all in mm -hmm. Bloomington, Tom. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and he was, uh Let's just say he had a heckle and jive personality. <laughs> heckle and, and jive, I like that. Yeah. And he, uh, you know, he rubbed a lot of people wrong, but other people worshipped him. And, mm -hmm. and you can't argue with his success on the court, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Brent, if people want to see the entire list, if they want to have more information about this project, what's going on with the project? Where did they go from here? Well, it's really a, a, a multitude of celebration points and exposure points to the public. Uh, you can go to indiana25.com, learn more about the project itself. Rich, this, this fall we've got a beautiful book coming out, uh, including photos and essays of the 25 greatest sports stories in the history of Indiana, with contributions from guys like the, uh, Tom here. Uh, some of the most distinguished journalists in the state are participating with the project. So working with MT Publishing in Evansville, Indiana, uh, Mark Thompson has really guided us on how to put this thing together. And there's going to be some surprises in this, in this book. We've had access to some of our sports legends, and I think it's been a very reflective project for them. So we're excited about it. Guys, thanks for being here tonight. Indiana25.com for more information. No 